Welcome back to the Upper Room. Jesus calls his disciples to be salt and light. Salt, though it's small, has a big impact on a meal. In a very dark place, even a small light becomes a life-changing difference maker. This month in the Upper Room, we're talking about how we can reach Kingman with our influence and with our Christian character. Last week, we started with an easy challenge. This week, it's going to be much tougher, but the payoff in the end is worth it. One of the ways that we can stick out in a good way, like salt and light, is to not be easily offended. We all like to point out how people today so easily get bent out of shape. We joke about a person getting triggered. But this is a dangerous thing to do because it's not always easy to avoid getting offended ourselves. And then once we get offended, things can go sideways real quick. But if you take the high road in your life, you will retain your Christian witness and you'll feel good about yourself later. It's not fun having to circle back to apologize for how you reacted to something in a way that wasn't mature or constructive. I was on staff at a church back in the early 2000s, and the lead pastor had us read a book called The Bait of Satan. The whole premise of the book was that getting offended and holding a grudge is a trap. I love to fish. This summer I was in Minnesota trying to help my little nephews catch some bluegill with some little fishing lures. The water was clear so we could see the fish swim up to our bait. Most of them resisted the urge to hit our little spinners, but some just couldn't help themselves. Later, we switched to worms and we had the same experience. We would jiggle the worm in front of the fish's mouth, hoping it would take the bait. One time, we threw a shiny hook in the water, no worm at all, and we caught a fish doing that. Once a fish bites down on our fish hook, it's over. They are in for a rough go. They will get dragged up out of the water and into our hands. Now, we're mostly catch and release fishermen, so the fish are lucky. But next time, if someone else catches them, they could end up on a plate. My upper room friends, the enemy is baiting his hook. He wants you to get offended with someone, and he wants you to take the bait. Because he knows once you get offended, he's got you just where he wants you. Some of the best advice I've ever received and advice that I give all the time is this. Take the high road. Someone said some junk about you. Take the high road. Someone did some things that really irritated you. Take the high road. Half the time, the high road is just keeping your mouth shut, trusting God to take care of you and your reputation. Ignoring an offense is a lost art. The low road takes many forms. It could include gossiping back about the person who first gossiped about you. It could involve slandering the person who offended you. It could involve you seeking revenge. The low road can also just be a passive-aggressive comment. Taking the low road with difficult and challenging people only guarantees the situation will get worse. The reason I try hard to take the high road and the reason I sometimes practically beg loved ones to do the same is because the low road options guarantee the situation's going to get worse. If you want your problems to go away, don't take the low road. Stay on the high road at all costs. The Bible has some pretty great verses about taking the high road and avoiding the bait of Satan, which is getting offended. Proverbs 19.11 Wisdom produces patience. It is to his glory to overlook an offense. It's good to be Teflon. It's good to be like the inside of a nonstick cooking pan. You will go far in life and you will bring glory to God if you let a potential offense just go sliding right off your back. You might say, but them's fighting words. Just dodge, keep moving forward, eyes on Jesus. Here's another, Proverbs 18, 19. A brother offended is more unyielding than a strong city. If you engage on the low road and you return an offense by causing your brother to be offended, now you're both dug in. Good luck getting anything positive accomplished. Look at Proverbs 12, 16. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent, the wise, overlook an insult. My goodness, don't give the time of day to mud that's being thrown at you from down on the lower road. Again, just dodge and keep moving forward. Eyes on Jesus. One more, just because these are so fun. Proverbs 29, 11. 
Fools give full vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. The world has plenty of people losing their tempers. We'll be salt and light for Jesus when we are de-escalating forces in our homes, workplaces, and neighborhoods. Don't be a flamethrower. Be a fire extinguisher. The Sermon on the Mount, where we're first called salt and light, is where Jesus gives an explanation of how his disciples are to conduct themselves. In Luke 6, 27, we read, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other. If someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you, Jesus says? Even sinners love those who love them. The main reason we need to avoid offense is because it robs us of our ability to love others. Bless those who curse you? Do good to people who hate you? Someone slaps you good, turn the other cheek? Now do you see it? Now do you see how not getting offended will cause you to stick out in this world? I've watched some very mature people get treated poorly, and I watch them handle it with class and with grace and with shocking strength. It takes great strength to not to react to things out of our flesh. When the incident was over, I watched the person who kept their cool and who took the high road rise in the minds of everyone who saw went went down. The respect for this person went up every time. And that means their influence on everyone went up as well. The world struggles to believe in Jesus because so many Christians don't live the way we're called to live. We're his disciples. We are to grow in this if we're going to be effective. I want to leave you with one more scripture. This one would be worth memorizing. It's in Romans. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what's right in the eyes of everyone. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you'll heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. My flesh can get a tiny sliver of satisfaction. If I love my enemy, it will be like heaping burning coals on his head. He won't know what to do. Not going to lie, I like that part. Do not be overcome by evil, upper room, but overcome evil with good. Do this and we will be salt and light. Now for the application. Who's driving you nuts? Who's making your life hard? Who says, who says things that often offends you? Don't take the bait. Take the high road. Pray and ask God to give you strength. Kingman is going to change It'll be because we start being who we've been called to be. I think we're up for the challenge, and I'm going to be praying for you in this area, and by all means, please be praying for me as well. Have a great week, Upper Room.